These two women were both married to one of the most notorious men in the news today, Waco cult leader David Koresh. Not only were they both a part of his harem, Janine and Robin Bonds are also mother and daughter. Robin had a son with David Koresh named Sean, and her mother Janine believes that her former lover is not the evil man that he has been made out to be. Later on, we're going to go via satellite to Australia and meet this family. They are talking for the first time publicly about their own involvement in Koresh's cult. Word from inside the compound is that their 24-year-old son, Peter, whom we've heard about, was killed in the Waco shootout. Their daughter, Nicole, is still inside the compound. And just like Robin, Nicole also has a child with David Koresh. Michelle and Robin were best friends at that Waco compound. They haven't talked in more than two years until today. Also standing by at the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas, is this mother, whose son, David, also remains inside, and she has been holding vigil for his safe release. Another cult captured the world's attention. You all may remember this when Jim Jones, you all remember? We all do, led more than 900 members of the People's Temple to Mass Suicide in Jonestown. We're gonna be talking to Jim Jones's former right-hand man to find out what really does go on inside the mind of a cult leader. And one of the things I guess we're all wondering is when you are inside, you know, living this life and, you know, being his wife, and we want to say that being, to him, being a wife is just having sex. So there was no official marriage ceremony. No, no ceremonies. Yes, but did you consider yourself to be his wife? Yes, we, um, when, we, when we would have sex, we were considered to be his wives, and, um, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, be with anybody else or even look at any other man. You would get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so... You felt the same way, Janine, mm -hmm. that you were his wife, yeah, but really. you knew that your daughter was also his wife, mm -hmm. and that was okay with you? Well, it was, it, you got to understand this was done in a very gradual way. Uh -huh. At first, it was just like the single women, uh -huh. and then he eventually went through scriptures and told us why he was going to take the other men's wives, too, because of the house of David he was building, and he needed to have more children, and so he was doing it that way. I know, but what, what or where in the scriptures can you justify breaking up married people, married couples, because we're going to talk to this family in uh, Australia. How could he justify, in your own mind, breaking up married couples to take their wives? I mean, how See, did that make sense to you? Well, it did make sense to me at the time, because he would start with Psalms 45, and he would go into the seventh field, and he would go into Revelation, and he, he had a whole Bible study. Mm -hmm. I hear and it was very... Very good at quoting scripture. Very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's not like this happened overnight. And the people were affected very deeply. It's not like we said, oh, yeah, fine, you can have my wife. It was, we all went through a very hard time. About the splitting yes, up because the Because I was married to my husband for 25 years. And had to leave your husband. Well, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we're trying to understand. We're trying to really, uh, today, understand what goes on in the mind of a cult leader. And you all probably know him better than anybody mm -hmm. else does at this point. And also, what happened to you? Because I want to know how you were raised that you could end up in a place like that, believing a man like Koresh. Mm -hmm. So were you, did you have sort of a, quote, normal upbringing? Mm -hmm. Very normal. I was raised a Catholic. You were raised a Catholic? For 20 years. And how did you raise your daughter? To My daughter was raised at the Seventh-day Adventist. As, as, and... So you all did, quote, the, the same things that everybody else does in life. Mm -hmm. You went to school. We had a very normal life. Lived in California. My husband and I both worked. My kids went to school. Everything was normal. Then in 1983, when David Koresh came into the group, he was Vernon Howell then. Uh -huh. he kind of, we kind of went with Vernon because we felt he had the new light. We were, we were advancing in the scriptures. Is what advancing we were in the scriptures. We were looking for more prophecy to happen. So had he come, to, like, to your church to speak or what? Um... She says I was raised a Seventh-day Adventist, but we were in a group called The Branch. Excuse me. <coughs> and, and the um, group was led by two different leaders. First, Benjamin Roden, and then when he died, his wife took over Lois Roden. Mm -hmm. And then Vernon came along and took over from Lois Roden. And um, that's, that's the um, religion I was raised in. So mm -hmm. I, it was very normal to me for the, because these people claim to be living prophets. So to me, well, hey, you know, another living prophet, hey, that's normal. So, I mean, it was just normal. 
But what was normal about him saying, I want to take your daughter back to Texas, which he did? Well, you can understand, um, when David took Robin for his wife, I did not know. Uh -huh. He took her back to Texas and you were 14 years old. I was, I was 14, but I came back home several times because I just couldn't take it. The what time could that you I, take? What was going it's on? It's just hard. You don't, when I went there the first time, I was 15, and we didn't have any heat, and we didn't have um, any hot water, and it was winter, and mm -hmm. I was freezing my butt off. So I called my parents, and I said, I want to come home, and they came and got me. Was he having sex with you then? Had mm -hmm. you been taken as a wife No, at not until I was 17. Not until you were 17. That's when I started really getting into it when he started sleeping with me because by then you kind of feel stuck. You know, you're having sex with this man and he's really got you by your mind, your body. You know, so yeah. Well, so one of the questions I, I, I think we all want to know is we all see this as a cult. We all see this as somebody who's taken over your mind. Did you at the time recognize mm -hmm. that, that it was indeed a cult and that you were being brainwashed? No. You I just didn't feel believed that way. him. I didn't you, feel that way at all. Do you believe that he's evil? I believe he's lost his mind. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that he's evil. So what kinds of things would you have to go through there within the, the cult compound? Um, well, life's pretty normal, I mean, to me anyway, when I was there. As cults go. Yeah, as cults go. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> We'd get up in the morning and we would have breakfast and either you had kitchen duty and you fixed breakfast or you just fixed, you know, you ate breakfast, you had studies and you ate lunch and you had another study and you ate dinner and you had another study and you went to bed and started all over again. Uh-huh. So it was... Were you aware of the, quote, other wives? Oh, yes. 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 When did you become aware that your daughter was a wife, Janine? She told me when I went down, I believe, in, um, at Passover time. Shortly after, maybe six months after he had become his wife, and she told me, and I was very upset because I didn't know that he was going to do that. Uh -huh. It upset me very, very much. So if you were so upset, why didn't you then say... Because you have to know him. He's very convincing. Mm -hmm. he, has, he has an ability to talk to you, and he takes his Bible, and he doesn't even need the Bible. He, he can remember it. So you were upset talk. about your daughter being his wife, being, you know, used sexually by him. And yet you ended because up... Because he said, this is the house of David. She's going to have a baby for God. All these babies are being born for God. They're God's children. They're going to be in the kingdom. Let me, let me explain something. Um, he claims to be Christ. And he tells you who wouldn't want to be married to Christ. He's perfect. Why would you want a mere human being when you could have Christ? Okay. So that's but, okay. What you would this say. is this is this is where where you all leave me here because but the point the point we're all trying to understand is, you were raised Catholic and you were raised Seventh Day Adventist. I have friends of Seventh Day Adventists and except the fact that they so they have church on Saturday, they're they're just like I am. So and believe many of the same things I believe. How does a woman who's raised to be Catholic and you raised your daughter to be quote a normal American citizen? end up believing this guy who says he's Christ. Uh, all I can tell you is you had to be there. What can I say? Uh -huh. it's, it's, not, it's like a drop of water falling on your head a little bit at a time. It's not like you just accept it. Uh -huh. It takes a while. So did you believe that he was Christ? Well, when he first started, he was just claiming to be a prophet. Uh -huh. um, it, it, he progressively changed and decided, you know, that now I'm Christ. Uh -huh. And so it was like she said, it's a progressive thing. Um, so something's right happened to I your left. mind that you don't say. Well, what happened to the prophet you used to be? You know, so something's oh, happened. She did. She yeah. Oh yeah, him I questioned deeply. him. Mm -hmm. I was one of the ones. That's one of the reasons why I left. You know, I'm 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 always asking questions. Troublemaker. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Um, but did he Did he encourage separatism between the two of you? Did he like? No, he wouldn't even he let separated us. Talk to each other. We couldn't we talk to each other. We all were in different other. places because he was afraid of what we would say to each other. He wouldn't let us talk to each other. It was like. We're bad influences on each other. So when you, when you found out about your daughter, you also went down there. Did you go down there to get her? Did you go down to say, what's going on? Or, Well, my husband and I were really upset. It, but like I said, Vernon just kept talking to us, and he convinced us that this is the way it was supposed to be. And life went on, and Robin had Sean. And then it wasn't until like three or four years later that the other light came where he started taking wives of married members. So you and your husband went down there? 
And, we went down there because we go down there every Passover. I mean, okay. we lived in L.A. And My so husband then, and I worked. Right. And then you became one of his wives also. Uh, I became one of his wives in 89. How, you didn't question that at all? I questioned it very deeply. It was very hard for us to go through all this. My husband and I talked about it a lot. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.